So this is going to be a review of The Nightmare Before Christmas. I went to go see the film in theaters for its re-release for its 30th anniversary. This is a film that's just a staple during this time of year, and how could it not be? A film that incorporates Halloween and Christmas seamlessly into one great story. Like Hocus Pocus, it feels like this movie just gets more and more popular every single year. And as a fun fact, Hocus Pocus and The Nightmare Before Christmas both released in 1993. So 1993 was just a huge year for Disney and Halloween. Now, I was actually first introduced to the whole Nightmare Before Christmas movie in the video game Kingdom Hearts 2, as it was featured as a Disney World in that game. This was back in 2006, and I had never seen anything from the film before, but I got the gist of the story from the game, about the character of Jack Skellington, how he's fascinated by Christmas, the world of Halloween, the whole world of Christmas, all of that kind of stuff. Amazingly enough, the first time that I saw a glimpse of the actual film was later that year, when Disney did a promo commercial for the 3D re-release of that film in the theaters for its 13th anniversary. So the first time I saw the film was actually for its 3D re-release in the theaters October of 2006. So amazingly, this was a film I actually had seen in theaters before, despite me being negative two when the film originally came out in 1993. This was yet another Disney re-release I decided to go see after I had just seen a majority of the Disney 100 re-releases that they had just done over the past few months. I just think there's just something different about the in-theater experience, getting to see a film on the big screen the way it was originally intended, with a crowd, and as I mentioned, Nightmare Before Christmas is such a cultural and seasonal staple, I couldn't pass up the chance to watch it again on the big screen, in this case close to its 30th anniversary. The actual 30th anniversary was October 13th, a Friday the 13th by the way, and I saw the re-release about a week later on Saturday the 21st. Everyone, or at least most, know the story of this film by now. In the holiday world of Halloween, you got Jack Skellington, he's the king of Halloween, the pumpkin king, the knight of nightmares, the titan of terror, well anyway, you get the idea. Anyway, he begins to grow tired of Halloween, the same old yearly Halloween shenanigans, to which he then discovers the world of Christmas, to which he then becomes motivated to take over the holiday himself, adding a bit more of the Halloween spirit to it. And you can imagine all the shenanigans that happen from there. There's a simple kid-like element to the story, and that's because Tim Burton, the mastermind behind this film, originally wrote the story as sort of a poem for a children's book, to which it eventually became a movie. Despite the official title for this film being Tim Burton's The Nightmare Before Christmas, Tim Burton actually isn't the director of this film. That would be director Henry Selleck, who does, who's done other great stop motion work like Coraline and James and the Giant Peach. But it's Tim Burton who's obviously the mastermind when it comes to the story of this film, but his visual signature and style is just all over this film. When it comes to the character design, the visual aesthetic, it's a beautiful looking film, and I mean, it's aesthetic is just so goddamn good. It's Tim Burton visually at his best. And of course, the film has that same kind of gothic circus musical type score that comes with most of his famous works. The music and score here is done by Danny Elfman, who's collaborated with Tim Burton plenty of times. Besides the film being iconic for combining Halloween and Christmas, the songs in this film certainly contribute to that also. All of the songs here are A+. They're just woven into the story perfectly, and that's impressive because there's when you do the count, there's a decent amount of them in this relatively short film. Besides some of the more fun song segments, I think the movie is at its best or most fun when it's actually living up to that title, The Nightmare Before Christmas. Whether it's the citizens of Halloween Town creating the Christmas presents in a very Halloweenish, ghoulish type fashion, or when Jack finally takes on the role of Santa Claus himself and is just effing up the holiday all over the goddamn place. Now, I think the film works great as a basic holiday fable, and you combine that with the technical elements behind the film, and you have something really special. Now, as an overall movie, I do think there's a few shortcomings here. The major one, I think, is Oogie Boogie and his role. Now, Oogie Boogie is a fun character. You know, great song, great personality, great voice acting behind him. I just think he's really fun. But in terms of his role in the story, he honestly just feels thrown in there just to be a villain or to have a villain for the sake of having a villain. And it feels that way because this story, as I mentioned, was originally written to be a short and sweet child story, so he didn't really need a villain. Those same sensibilities don't apply to when you're adapting it as a film, to where you end up with a sort of villain climax that really just feels thrown in there and not really organic to the story. 
you know, in the film, Jack comes to the realization that, uh oh, I really fucked up. And all of a sudden, they just rush to the climax, to which it feels tacked on to say the least. It's definitely a film and story where the villain is not essential to the plot or anything like that. But Oogie Boogie is still one of the more popular Disney villains, so clearly he was able to make quite the impression in the short amount of screen time that he did have. <laughs> Speaking of being thrown in there, to a lesser degree, I do feel that way about the film's romance between Jack and Sally. It's a romance just for film romance sakes. I don't think there's a lot of great development or even a lot of great moments between the two. You definitely see Sally's fascination for Jack, but Jack doesn't really have one moment until the end of the film where he seems like he sees Sally as anything except like, you know, a close friend or even just an acquaintance. Yet, just like Oogie Boogie, Jack and Sally are one of the most iconic Disney couples and a lot of cosplay and all that kind of stuff for whatever reason. Goes to show, while they're definitely, I don't think I see it as a great romance, just something about it that just clicks and works for a lot of audiences, past and present. Those issues aside, this is a film that succeeds based on Burton's artistry, the songs are fantastic, and for being a great hybrid of Halloween and Christmas, you know, they're combined into one seamlessly fun holiday fable. It's great in these elements and a few others, but as a film, I think the overall story, definitely the villain plot and the romance, keep it from being a great movie overall. So I would give the film an 8 out of 10. What? Snake eyes? Good! Now, while that score may seem low, which it's really not for me, an 8 out of 10 is still a really good, worthwhile movie. I think there's a lot of good elements here, great elements technically, but like I mentioned, a few shortcomings in some of the traditional film aspects when it comes to villain development, romance, and all that kind of stuff. Now, I would have loved to have seen the coverage of this movie at the time it came out, because when it came out, it didn't exactly light it up at the box office. It did make a decent profit, $95 million worldwide on a $24 million budget, but obviously it just became, I wanted to see that moment where it really did become that cultural phenomenon, like getting that cult following and become such a staple during the holiday season. But I guess it's not really that surprising, because like Hocus Pocus, Holiday films, if done right, become staples in culture, and in the case of The Nightmare Before Christmas, it has the advantage of playing through the Halloween season and the Christmas season, so it's definitely a win-win back-to-back holiday seasons and all that kind of stuff. Though in the great debate of which is it more and more of a Halloween movie or a Christmas movie, if I were to be asked, I would vote it's more of a Christmas movie. That's because Christmas is really the driving force behind the film story, whereas Halloween is just the initial setup. My theater ended up being pretty packed. It was very packed for a re-release. So it goes to show how much this film really does mean to people and how it continues to get bigger and bigger throughout the years. So anyway, that'll end up doing it for this video, this review of The Nightmare Before Christmas. If you made it to the end of this review, thank you for watching.